guys today I'm going to show you how I painted this ocean sunrise painting in acrylic I used a 12 inch by 12 inch stretched canvas and I'm going to go ahead and start listing the colors that I used in this painting I'm also going to go ahead and put them in the description box below along with some of the paint brushes that I used so I hope that you enjoy this and thank you so so much for watching So I'm starting off using a 12 by 12 inch canvas. I had a little bit of color on there, but I'm covering it up with cerulean blue and a little bit, uh, well actually a little bit of cerulean blue and mostly titanium white. I wanted a really light background when I was blocking in the sky. And then I took a little bit of cad yellow, quinacridone magenta, and titanium white, and I just kept blending that up into the cerulean blue I kind of put more white in the middle and then like had that peachy color below that then I'm going through and putting in the main part of the ocean and for the colors for that I used cerulean blue phthalo green and a little bit of Mars black and then I'm putting in the sandy area right now and I'm using burnt sienna and a little tiny bit of magenta. And that lighter area is going to be a mixture of mostly titanium white, burnt sienna, and magenta. You want it to be lighter. That is going to be where the wet sand area is, where the reflective area is going to be. So this is going to be a, it's going to jump back and forth from real time to time lapse. Right now I'm just blocking stuff in. So I did uh, straight burnt sienna for that line when I put in my water line. And then I went back on top of it with ultramarine blue and white. I'm going to go through and I'm putting in my big block of color for the cloud. And all I'm using for that is ultramarine blue and I had just a tiny, tiny bit of the quinacrino magenta. The brush that I'm using is actually a mop brush and it's really nice. It kind of gives a soft effect around the edges of the clouds. The only thing that you got to watch for is when it sheds. So sometimes I like to use, I actually use makeup brushes sometimes when I'm doing that. I use the um, brushes from my Ipsy makeup bag that I get each month. <laughs> they definitely come in handy for my art needs as well as my makeup needs. <laughs> So I'm just kind of dabbling that on and making sure that I'm concentrating on getting the edges as soft as I can. And you don't have to be perfect with this. Like I said, we're going to go over most of this. This is just the main block of color. So I'm grabbing, I'm adding to that mixture just a little bit of titanium white. All I'm really doing is dragging out the cloud, the edges of the cloud a little bit so they look a little bit wispy on the edges. What, what I normally like to do is I like to work from darkest to lightest. So I put in my most darkest block of color and then what I do is I just go ahead and pick up a little bit of white, start doing, you know, some highlights and forming some other 
clouds, trying to make it all three-dimensional. And then I go back through, pick up more white, maybe a little more magenta, and just keep doing that method because that's going to that's going to give you a three-dimensional look on your clouds. All I'm really doing is just scumbling it on. And I am using, I switched from the mop brush. Um, you probably noticed I'm using a different brush and that is a small flat brush. Picked, I went back up and picked uh, some titanium wh white and the quinacrinone magenta. And again, I'm just using the same method, just going back and forth, scumbling it on and I'm just going over the parts that I just did. You know, not covering everything that you did up, but just kind of trying to define it a little more using that lighter color. And that's what's gonna, you know, really shape your cloud or really anything that you're working on. I do that a lot with my water. I just do a back and forth process of lights and, you know, sometimes eventually I'll go back through and even add in some more shadows. And as I'm working, I, you know, the background isn't completely dry, the ultramarine blue. So it's nice you kind of get a little bit of a like oil painting effect when you're doing this because it's easy to blend, it's still wet. So it's blendable and it just works out nicely. And sometimes um, if you grab a lot of the paint on your brush and you're pushing it into the canvas, scumbling it on, you're gonna get these little highlighted areas, like kind of like what's happening now. And it just, it gives it a cool effect. And I never really worry too much about over mixing colors. In fact, when I'm like preparing a new color to put on the canvas, I don't, I don't really mix, mix it, over mix it unless I'm doing like a portrait or something because it's not, it just, the variation that you get from it is really cool. And you know, don't, don't worry about mixing everything perfect and just start painting it on. And you'd be surprised at some of the effects that you can get when you do that. Especially when you're doing like animal portraits or something like that or doing animals just the little you know uneven or the variation in color that you're getting from not over mixing is pretty cool. I'm pretty much all that I've got on my brush at this point is mostly just the titanium white now and a little bit of the Quinacrino magenta. And this whole process doesn't take very long. You don't need to, I mean, you really don't need to spend a whole bunch just to, to get a little bit of that detail. I think I spent all together, the timing on this video was 49 minutes long. So this painting took about an hour. And as I got lower, I try to make the clouds a little bit thinner and lighter. It kind of gives it depth, like it looks farther, those clouds look farther away.
And then the ones up top that are bigger kind of look like they're closer up by you. Now I've gone even lighter, mostly using the titanium white now and just defining those edges of that cloud just to kind of really make them pop. And I'm, I'm not using a lot of, I'm not using any water really on my brush. Mostly paint still so clouds are finished I'm gonna be moving on to the sand area you want to I'm using um, a different flat brush and all I'm doing is just taking the same color almost that I used in the clouds pretty much just that white and quinacridone magenta and you're kind of doing you're pulling it down so this is like the reflective part if you ever watch Bob Ross which I'm sure most of you have who are painters out there um, that's you're just kind of following that Bob Ross method of pulling it down And then I'm kind of pulling it out, away, and then down again, and then blending it out. And then that edge of the wet sand area, I kind of define that so it's a little bit lighter. But whenever you're doing the reflective part on that sand, try to aim for whatever kind of colors you have in your sky. Or if you have a pretty sunset, you can even do that. So now I'm putting in some of the detail in the water and I'm using ultramarine blue and white. Using a flat brush kind of just doing honestly I'm kind of using the same method that I did with the clouds just back and forth side to side um, like a side to side method and focusing on you're defining the water line and you're you want to focus on making the farthest part of that water line um, thinner and then as you get up close you want it to be thicker And the part that I put on there almost looks white, the lightest part of the water, but it's not. I'm, I'm gonna be putting on my whitest white at the very end. And you're just kind of doing like little diamond type shapes for these foamy wavy areas back and forth. And again, try to focus on not using your lightest lights quite yet because as you build it up like we did in the cloud area you're going to get a lot more of a three-dimensional look and those layers are going to look really nice on that water Just using the same color, the same method. Try to focus mostly on, like as you're getting farther away, there, those little squiggle patterns, they're kind of gonna be like straighter and thinner. 
as you get way far out in the ocean. And then I am using a little bit lighter of a color putting these in because these are like the actual little wave, wave wavy parts that I'm putting in. And now I'm just defining that little tiny wave back there and just doing the shape of like a, like almost like you're trying to do an, a half circle, just a little wave back there. And then I'm taking a little bit of that and kind of dragging it out. So it looks like there's foam under that wave. Okay, so I went back and picked up mostly ultramarine blue. Just a little bit of white. I'm kind of putting in just a little tiny bit of detail in the very farthest point of the ocean. Um, that's kind of what I'm building up right now. And just, like I said, use kind of thinner, thinner, um, uh, more horizontal lines. Just enough to give it the impression that there's waves far in the distance. You don't need anything crazy back there. You don't want to put a lot of detail into it. Just a little bit. And then I, I tend to use my hand a lot and blend things out sometimes. Now I'm going through and I actually picked up mostly ultramarine blue. And it's pretty dark. I'm putting this in the... It's kind of like how I did when I put the first initial waterline in. It's just a shadow area and I'm taking mostly ultra, or, uh, mostly white right now with a little bit of the ultramarine and kind of just putting in that like frothy um, water right there and dragging it out a little bit. That ultramarine blue I'm dragging out a little bit. It's going to kind of give the illusion that there's like some shadows. But I'm trying to be careful not to cover up all the sandy area. Like that brown sandy area. You kind of want to leave a little bit of that. And I even went back through. Which I'm doing right now with burnt sienna. And just kind of pop some more of that in there. Now I took a really tiny liner brush and used mostly tiny titanium white in the ultramarine blue and I just did the same method that I pretty much do with the diamond shapes and squiggled that on in there. Just in that front closest part of the water. And now I'm going back through and putting more of a the reflection in the sand. I'm kind of working in the sand a little more. I wanted to bring in more of the pink color that I had up there. And, you know, you're just pulling it down, like I said, and then you're going to go back through and blend it out. And I'm using a bigger flat brush. I think it's a one inch flat brush. Just blend it out really soft. A lot of times when you look at like beach pictures and you see that wet reflective sand in, in a sunset, it almost looks metallic. But it's not. It's just the effect that you get when you're doing that, uh, you know, pulling down method of and then blending it out.
and I'm going back through and doing it again but I'm using a little bit lighter of a color pretty much the same that I used in the lightest cloud color up there which was the magenta and white but I used a little bit more of the magenta color I'm just speeding some things up now. Um, I'm doing the same thing pretty much. Um, using just you're your drawing out more of that wet sand effect. And then I go back through and I'm putting more of the burnt sienna in there. And I even brought it up top there, the burnt sienna. I didn't really like how... Um, bright some of that area was so I just kind of added a little bit of that brown in there and now I'm going through and working on the water again using the same exact method that I just told you just you know you're doing you're going back and forth and I've got burnt sienna on my brush again and I kind of put in a little bit of a shadow and pulled that burnt sienna down um, where the water line is. And now I'm going through with my whitest white and I'm literally loading my brush with, with the white and just, I'm dabbing it into the canvas. It's gonna give it that splashy look. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this painting tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I will be posting weekly tutorials on subjects like still life, landscapes, and some animal paintings. So if you want to follow, please like and subscribe and make sure to click the bell to be alerted of upcoming videos. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you.